Hello, my name's Keith, and um, I'd like to thank you for watching this uh, video of me trying to put back together a, a Mercruiser 470. It's a 3.7 litre petrol engine that comes out of a boat. Just before you watch this next sort of episode of me putting this thing back together, I'd just like to apologise for the absolutely horrendous camera. What it is, is I've got no tripod or anything like that. I put my phone on to try and film it all. And so as you can envisage, I've been trying to build an engine one-handed with a phone in, in the other. Um, there's a few shots where I've managed to rest my phone on a nail in the side of the shed. But like I say, the camera's not very good and the voiceover probably won't be much better either. But thanks for watching anyway. Cheers. Okay, we're going to start putting in the main bearing caps now. I'm going to put in number three bearing cap. And on this, it's got the thrust of the, for the crankshaft built into either side of the, main bear, of the main bearing. You can see it there on the side of the cap. That runs on the two machine surfaces on the inside of the crankshaft there, on the either side of the web. This stops end float which is the crank sliding forwards and backwards in the engine. Keeps it nice and tight and running in a parallel line, making a note of your numbers and the marks. And uh, they all coincide, one, two, three, four arrows all pointing forwards. And we're gonna put the bolts in, run it down. Now on the main bearing cap for number five, it has these rubber like wick seals which slide into the side of the main bearing cap. <clears throat> they sit nice and flush there. That's the face that comes down onto the block. And you've got one either side. And these are actually far too long for the job. They didn't come in the gasket set I bought with the engine. So I've managed to find these. They're off of a Ford 3000 tractor. So same thing but they are a lot longer so they've got to be trimmed down but i think they've got to be trimmed down anyway but we'll put the main bearing cap on and i'll fit it there's like uh got the cap there with the bearing in blob of graphogen same as all the other bearings sliding around nice thin coat once you've done that you uh, get a little tiny tiny bit of sealer just on that back face there and this really needs to be like the thinnest layer of sealer you've ever put on anything really because you don't want this bulging out it's, 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 if it bulges out there you get it onto the main into the main bearing journal you don't want it in there so you just scrape that as much off in there as you can a nice thin layer do the same on the other side and this is there's no actual gasket on this part this this is what this sealer is doing it is forms the gasket in that area there to stop any oil leaking from the main bearing cap out into the bell housing once you've got all that sealer on there nicely so it's, like i said it's got to be really thin layer put your cap in and then you slide in these rubber wick seals i put a bit of oil in this hole just to help it down and it just slides in there after you've slid those in there are two pins that you cut to length to slide in behind there once you've put those in you then torque your crank all the main bearing caps down okay so torque it down every time you torque a cap down you want to give it a quick spin make sure that the engine turns freely if you spin it after you torque each cap, if you tighten one cap down and the crank goes tight, you know where your problem is. It's on the cap you've just tightened down. So like I say, you just tighten each cap, give it a spin. Same again, tighten the cap down, torque it down. Not massive torques inside this engine. I mean, some engines I've sort of had to put together, you whack things down amazingly tight but no it's not there's not massive in this engine so it's just torque it down i managed to find the torque settings on the on the internet found a, a bit of a, a 
brochure, a chapter out of a book that had got them in there, so that those are the ones that I'm referring to. And once it's all talked in, like I say, give it a nice spin. All lovely and free. Now here, I'm trimming off the end of those seals. Unfortunately, like I say, the camera's on a nail in the sheds and it, you can't actually see what I'm doing, but I've got a feeler blade resting on the shell bear, on the cap, on the bearing cap, and I've sliding a Stanley knife across the top of the feeler blade so that there's just a little bit of the rubber left proud so it will crimp up with the sump. I've added a picture so you can see what, I'm, see what I've done. This was all I could do because after I'd done it, I realised the camera was rubbish. Now, they're trimmed up and they're just slightly proud. Now that will compress up when you put the sump on, forming a nice tight seal in there. Then just uh, one come final whip round with the torque wrench, just a final check. This will be the last time I'm talking the main bearing caps. And just give them all a click down so you know you're there. And then it's just a case of another spin and we're gonna start banging the piston. Oh no, gonna start putting the, put the camshaft thrust ring in. Putting this on, this will hold the camshaft in its place while I'm turning the engine over because I've got to stand it up to get the pistons in. And so you put this thrust plate on and this will hold the camshaft in place, stop it sliding out of the block. So run the bolts in. Again, I think the, the torque setting on these was about um, it's 13 Newton meters, I think it was. I haven't got a torque wrench that goes down that low, so I've sort of run them in and I've got a spanner and I've tightened them up with a spanner. I'm just giving them a good nip with a spanner. Just pull them up. 13 Newton meters as is not a massive torque, so they've got spring washers on them to stop them vibrating loose. So just give them up a, a, just a real good nip. Nothing massive, it's into an aluminium block, so you don't want to be putting a great big bar on them. And then give it a spin once it's done, all nice and free. And then we'll start putting the pistons in now. This piston, right, it's, it's got three rings on, two compression rings, got marks in the top. That notch in there denotes the front of the engine. This STD means it's a standard size piston. These two indents here, where the valves run when they're running on the overlap in between the uh, in between the strokes on the top of the ring you've got two dimples that mark the top of the top ring then on the second ring down there's a slight step on it i don't know if you can see it in this and then the third ring is the oil control ring that's made up of two wipers and then a drain ring in the middle which is a spring loaded you get a spring compressor, spring a ring compressor clamp, tighten it down, and that squeezes all the rings into the ring grooves on the piston to allow you to slide it into the bore. Now, obviously, if you haven't got one of these, I know people have done it with Jubilee clips and all sorts, but you have to squeeze those rings in because obviously they're all spring loaded out to allow you to slide it in the bore. So you just position your piston in the bore and tap it home with the stale of a hammer and there it is. In. So that's basically the pistons going in and you slide it in then till the main bearing comes onto the journal and you can bang a cap on them but I haven't yet because obviously it's all stood up. I want to put it on its face. So now I'm gonna put the third one in so you get a good skin of oil around inside that bore so it's, it's got a nice oil in there to slide the piston in. Position the piston in the clamp and the stale of your hammer and knock it home. Yeah, just it's not massive. You see the engine's rocking around. That's because it's on a workmate. It's, it's got to come off this soon because it's getting a bit too heavy for it. I think the workmate's not going to take the weight much longer. Then you add your caps. Now, the caps are all 
um, they have to go back on the same cap to the same rod. If you look here, this one's got a number two on it on there, and there's a number two on the face of the cap, and those numbers need to line up. And with those numbers lined up, you'll see the machined notch in the main bearing cap. This locates the bearing and it's on the opposite side to the locating lug in the con rod. Okay, this stops the bearing spinning inside the cap. So you drop your cap down, get some nuts on it, spin it down, and then you want to give it a bit of a turn, make sure everything's free. Keep got to keep keep turning the engine over while you're putting it together so you know that it's free. And if you keep turning it, if you get to a point where you can't turn it, you, you know where your issue is. It's, it's the last thing you've done, basically. So you, you torque your caps down, turn the crank over to bring your next cap up. And also this, like I say, this is turning over and forward. What I'm turning it over with, it isn't the best. The engine is turns a lot freer than that. And it's just a, a tiny bar and I'm racking my knuckles on the bell housing as I'm turning it over. So it's, it's not the most comfortable of thing jobs to do. I should have found something better, but talking the main bearing caps down now and turning it over as we go. And then sort of go down them all. All nice. All turn, it, it does turn over, it does turn e over a lot easier than it looks. Like I say, it's on a workbench, this Black & Decker workbench, it's not the best. And I'm gonna have to be putting this engine on the floor soon because the workbench ain't gonna take the weight for much longer and also won't be able to maneuver it around. So, so your caps are on. Give it a turn. And you're away. Now, I'm gonna put timing chain on. I slid the timing chain over the can crankshaft and over the camshaft, and it lines up with these timing marks, which means the cam is now running in time with the crankshaft. Okay, and there it is. There's the timing chain tensioner put on the slack side of the chain. Thanks for watching.